nine-year-old Samantha is always on the go. She acts like she's driven by a motor. It's easy to see how her behavior can get Sam into trouble at school and make life unbearable at home. <laughs> Mum Michelle has great difficulty controlling Sam. She's had years of parenting courses, but none have helped, because Sam has a brain disorder that profoundly affects the way she thinks and behaves. Sam was diagnosed with Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, ADHD, last week. And psychiatrist Kevin Appleton is giving her a checkup before prescribing medication. ADHD affects the parts of Sam's brain that manage and organize her thoughts. Well done. Although she has normal intelligence, Sam finds it hard to concentrate on one idea at a time. She's easily distracted and she acts on impulse. Her brain doesn't seem to tell her to think about the consequences of her behavior, which means she's always in trouble. Ow! Um, Don't hit! Yeah. Please. Okay. Whee! Thank you. Curiously, Sam's hyperactive because parts of her brain are actually underactive. She's constantly seeking stimulation, trying to kickstart her brain to get it into focus. A bit like revving up a motor to keep it from stalling. The hardest thing with Sam is the energy, being on the go and not doing what she's told. She'll see something that she wants to do and she'll get sidetracked from what she's supposed to be doing. It's sort of very difficult to control that all the time. About one in 25 children are affected by ADHD. That's one in every classroom in New Zealand. They're much more demanding on parents than other children because they don't think before they act and they require constant supervision. She's got no concept of danger um, and this causes problems when she's out playing. She'll climb trees sort of higher than what she's capable of and um, she'll run out onto the road. She's into running away at the moment. Um, it's happening on quite a frequent basis, sort of three or four times a week. Um, when she's upset or when she's in trouble especially. So she'll walk along the tops of fences and stuff like that, yeah. I've had problems with her stealing now since she was four. I've had her at the police twice. She's very violent towards her brother. Um, she's not so violent towards me. Um, most of it is in play, which is not still not acceptable. Um, she can't grasp the concept that you just don't play like that. With the social side of things, there's a lot that she still needs to learn that she can't grasp the hang of. Um, and without learning these things and without getting you know, a reasonable education, I really don't know where she's going to end up. In about a week, Sam's going to start taking Ritalin, a powerful stimulant similar to cocaine. Hopefully, once we um, get her settled on it, the We'll see some improvement with her, uh, with her concentrating, um, with her energy levels, sort of tone it down a bit and um, she'll be more compliant with what she does uh, around the home and at school. Over the last few years, you know, it's taken a lot of energy on my part and getting to the point where I can't cope with it anymore, so the Ritalin is coming at the right time. <coughs> Kyle, now four, has been on Ritalin since he was two. To diagnose someone with ADHD at such a young age is highly controversial. But Kyle's had serious behavioural problems since he could first walk at ten months old. Without Ritalin, he's almost unmanageable. By the time he turned two, Kyle had started a fire, driven Mum's car in the driveway, and had three major head injuries from climbing dangerously. <laughs> Although his medication does make Kyle more controllable, he's still on the go all the time 
and he's very aggressive. No, I don't want my He can push you. Like, you could never describe to anyone how far he could push you. And, I mean, he's tried my parents a few times that I know of. I don't know about Michelle's mum and that. Um, the, they've had a taste, a small taste of what we've been, they've been quite... We can understand now what you're saying. Hey. This is Kyle on a good day and on medication. His parents did a lot of soul searching before medicating him, but his behavior was unbearable. It's heartbreaking when you can't take the child you love out anywhere, even to playgroup, because he causes so much trouble. biting children or pushing them or he'd go up, it didn't matter whether they were bigger than him or smaller or adults even, he'd go up and bite adults behind the knees or things like that, you know, and got to the point where I couldn't take him anywhere, I couldn't go anywhere. It, it, there was just a select few people who understood what we were going through and where he was coming from and they'd wrap their children up in woolly jumpers and things so he could go and play with them so that they wouldn't get bitten. But there, there would always be tears and I would always be on his back and it would just be a constant thing, and, and it had a big effect on our family, it had a big effect on our daughter, who was embarrassed to go anywhere because everybody knew her brother as trouble, and he got, he got labelled everywhere he went. Kyle's due to start school soon, and Michelle and Dean are deeply concerned about how he's going to cope. They're taking Kyle to be reassessed to see what else can be done to control his behaviour, as they're all too aware there's a lot at stake. And what's perceived as normal, like, you know, going to school, sitting at a table for two, three hours, is going to be a huge, huge step for him. I, I have my reservations because he can't do it. He physically cannot sit there. As, as much as he probably would like to or want to, his brain just can't stop for long enough to let him do it. He just needs to keep going. And you've got that fear of what other parents will say, well, you know, that Chandler child's letting my children down or, you know, he's disrupting the whole class. But... Basically, he has a right to an education as well, and you know, you, you only, you, you're a child's only advocate and you need to be there for them, but it's a very scary time. Kyle's parents know he's about to face his biggest challenge. They've asked for help to get Kyle ready for school, and school ready for Kyle. I always wanted to get married, have kids, live a happy life, and I always wanted everything perfect. Most people think ADHD is something that only affects children, but as it is better understood, more and more adults are being treated. At 31, Chrissy seems to lead a normal life. She teaches swimming and cares for her four-year-old daughter. As an adult, her ADHD is far more subtle than when she was young. I mentioned to someone at work the other day that I had ADHD, and they turned around and said to me, I would never have guessed. Yet Chrissy's life is dominated by her struggle to cope with the symptoms of ADHD and still appear normal. Chrissy takes Ritalin every day to help her function and still feels a strong sense of being different from other people. But I just remember finally being told that there was something wrong, that, that I am not crazy or, or just really, really naughty. Now that Chrissy's an adult, her experience provides us with insight into why children with ADHD behave the way they do. This is part of my life where it's totally disorganised and I hate it. I just have to put things away in the drawers. It's as simple as that, but not for Chrissy. Two weeks ago, she moved into a new flat and she's desperately trying to get organised. Now... I'm just putting that away, but I've just remembered that I've got washing in here that I want to do. Whereas most people probably would go and do that because it's got to be done. But what's stressing me at the moment is my dishes, but I really... I don't know where to start. We all say this at times, but Chrissy quite literally doesn't know where to start. She's perfectly capable of doing everything that's needed to get the flat tidy but her brain has difficulty focusing on what's important. She does several things at once and never finishes any one task. Everyone has times when they can't concentrate, especially when they're tired. 
But for Chrissy, this difficulty in paying attention is constant, intense, and interferes with every part of her life. What am I doing now? If you could see inside Chrissy's brain, it would look a lot like her flat, chaotic. Imagine trying to read a book at a rock concert, and you have some idea of what it's like for Chrissy to try and concentrate on unpacking. I'm just... deciding where everything goes, and I'm just deciding if I want that in that corner, or if I want it in that corner. Okay, um... By this time, your fingers should no. be sure we've got another box somewhere. There are those who dispute that ADHD exists. Oh yeah, I was looking for another box. If you do not feel this I can't find something and I'm getting frustrated, because I am. Well, maybe it's in here. Beep, 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 beep. And trying to pin down where Chrissy's personality leaves off and ADHD begins is a complex puzzle. Jana, where are my car keys? Um, 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 um. Ready? Are they in the kitchen? Yeah. They might be, eh? Yay! Keys. Cat wetsuit. People can live their whole lives without realising they have ADHD because it can easily be confused with a lack of discipline. Until last year, Jason had always blamed himself for the fact that he could never get his life on track. Being diagnosed with ADHD at 31 has helped him understand years of underachievement. Jason was often described as hyperactive as a child, but no one understood why. As an adult, Jason's easily bored, can't finish things, and has an insatiable appetite for intensity. The faster you go, the faster you want to go. So they just become addictive and more addictive. And uh, like the go-kart, <clears throat> I had the go-kart for two weeks. And after two weeks, I got used to the speed and the power. And I wanted to gear it up a bit and make it gruntier and make it go faster. And, you know, so it's uh, definitely an extreme personality. Jason's full of energy. He's restless, distractible and impulsive. All the things that get children with ADHD into difficulty. Yeah, just always moving. I'm always getting up and down all the time, uh, coming to the kitchen, getting a drink or getting a bite to eat, looking in the fridge, oh, nothing in there, close it again, you know, back to watch the video sort of thing, you know. Now that Jason has a new understanding of his difficulties, he's trying hard to settle down. But in his 20s, his life was in chaos. Heavy drinking, fast cars, sleeping around and trouble with the law. These are all common difficulties faced by teenagers and adults when ADHD goes untreated. The more thrill you get, the more you want. Just like the roller coaster. You know, my first comment was, oh, it was slower than I remember. And it's like, oh, can we just tweak this thing up a bit? Now and then, oh, okay, just say it happened, you tweaked it up, and I just want more, and I want more, and I want more. So, you know, um, like when I used to skid around in fast cars when I was in my younger silly years, um, it was just never fast enough. A lot of it, yeah, just um, always always on the go, 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 always very fast. Um, sitting still is very hard, you know. And I'm, I'm trying that at the, at the moment, it's, it's an effort. Right, boys, go for it. Difficulty concentrating on the task at hand makes school tough for children with ADHD. Trying to pay attention for Robert is a little like trying to focus for someone who's short sighted. He's intelligent enough to do well at school, if only his brain could focus on one thing at a time. It's a real effort to stay still, and detailed work makes him irritable. His brain craves stimulation to rev it up, and this can make him very disruptive. Classroom work's hard enough for Robert, but lunchtime is a nightmare. Robert acts before he thinks. He's always in serious trouble. So much so that his parents have started coming to school each day to supervise him. Mainly he's bashing kids, he retaliates. Robert is very naughty in his own right, but the other kids also have picked up that if they do something to him, he will retaliate straight away, and he does it without fail. And no matter how many times we tell him he has to walk away, he can do it a couple of times, but he can't do it. That third time is just too much for him, and then he tends to spark off very quickly 
and, and doesn't think what he's doing, he knows he's going to get into bad trouble for That's it. That's why the last time he actually, he was good, he walked away and sat down, so he'd done all the right things. Then the kids came up to kick him, and that was it. Then he found stones and sticks and, you know, you're not going to get one over on me type touch. We'll put it in the sun. Girls with ADHD tend to be less disruptive in class, so it's easier for their ADHD to go unnoticed. But they have the same learning difficulties as boys. Chrissy hated school because she often failed. Her parents struggled to understand why. What? Are you going to build a sandcastle? The interesting thing was that although she seemed to have all this difficulty in class, they did do some tests and found her intelligence was actually quite high. I think that was when we first began really to wonder, well, what is happening? Here's a reasonably intelligent young person who has great difficulty with school, doesn't want to go. She just didn't seem to want to sit down and concentrate on things for long. When we spoke to her teachers, they indicated that really she was withdrawing. So that seemed to be the sign that uh, she was really um, unhappy. Space. M. The teacher would read a story out and then ask us questions. Um, she'd like ask me, oh, and I'd be go totally blank, and she'd think that I wasn't listening. And um, yeah, I just felt really thick. Well, I was listening. I just didn't know how to explain what she'd just read out. Space. Well, I was reading through my reports. Some of the comments they made, they really hurt. Why? Oh, she needs to apply herself more. She needs to concentrate more. You know, I worked as hard as I could. And all the Ds and the Fs and the... <sighs> it's, it's for me, like, accepting who I am. I mean, really accepting who I am. Yeah. In all the jobs I went through, you know, I just... really hurt because they, they just used to make me feel like I was so dumb. You and <laughs> and I tried so hard. I couldn't keep my head around simple things like doing the cash register and stuff like that. How many times people used to go on and on at me about, well, this is what you do, why aren't you getting it? Are you thick or something? Samantha's been on Ritalin now for several weeks. Just have a look at your card. Hands up the people who haven't got one. Last year, her teacher was concerned about her poor attention span and her hyperactivity. That's hard to believe when you see Sam totally focused today. No, he hasn't made a mistake. He's come to see if he belongs. Let's get in a circle and let's discuss. Duck legs, not dingoes. Ritalin activates the part of Sam's brain that prioritises her thoughts. It helps her concentrate. It's like a dog. So is a wolf. Let's put it down. So is a wolf. Sam, can we just wait until we have our turn? Because the Ritalin maintains her brain activity at a constant level, she no longer needs to be hyperactive to keep her stimulated. CJ. There's been a great deal of controversy over Ritalin and other medications used to treat ADHD. So our trees don't have to be cut down. No one disputes their effectiveness, but many people are reluctant to give children such powerful drugs. Ritalin doesn't cure Sam's ADHD. The effects last only while the drug is in her system and she becomes hyperactive again as soon as it wears off. But at the moment at school, the improvement in her concentration is clear, even when distracting things are happening all around her. Not all parents are happy to treat their children with medication and not all children with ADHD need drugs. Robert's family and teachers work hard to keep Robert on track without using Ritalin. We have made a decision that we will not put him on drugs while his academic work is not suffering. He could perform a lot better in school if he was on drugs, I guess, but he is not, he's not performing beneath the average um, level of the class, so 
and he's performing slightly above the average range of the New Zealand children. Living with Robert not medicated places extra demands on the family. But they feel that in the long run, this approach is best for Robert. He's a very refreshing child. I think that while Robert can cope and while he can put strategies in, we can put strategies in place that work for him, then it's not a sensible way to go with him. Rob! Come on, Robert. I need you downstairs to do your homework. Please? Rob. It's a decision that requires an enormous investment of time and energy. Homework's just one example of the extra help Robert needs. Homework has always been a bit of a chore with Robert, but we're managing to turn that round because now homework has become a time when I sit down and I spend half an hour or an hour or whatever it takes with Robert by himself. Hey Rob, that's three minutes up. Come on. Please. Basically, we move everything off the table so he has nothing to play with, and he sits there with his homework in front of him, a pencil in his hand, and we work together. Right, what do you want to do? Would you rather do your maths? Robert really needs that one-on-one -on -one attention, and you could say a lot of children do, but he will underperform if he's not in a one-on-one -on -one situation, and that's guaranteed, yeah. Nine-year-old Robert will always need routine and structure to help him organise his life. Jackie hopes she can teach him skills that will help him cope as an adult. I think one of the main things for me was boarding school and the fact that it was structured and disciplined. It was like, you cannot do it, otherwise you get punished. I got punished a few times, but it was, yeah, actually I really enjoyed boarding school, is was, was what I needed. And I did very well at school, just because I was put in that environment. Um, then coming out of school was a whole different kettle of fish, you know, you were sort of on your own and it was up to you to be disciplined and structured and, and then wild crazy madness, <sighs> always like sort of rebellious and, and doing things I shouldn't, you know, in trouble with the law and just, I mean, just total wild craziness, you know. And then burnout really actually sort of brought it into a lot of it. Jason has tried stimulant medication but found it made him very anxious. These days, he's trying to use yoga and meditation to calm his hyperactivity. Yoga definitely does centre me. Um, uh, it does slow me down. It just sort of, yeah, it just makes me more calm, basically, instead of being so hypo and sort of bouncing around. Stress ends up making me a lot more full on, whereas yoga just makes my mind think a lot more logically. But Jason still has difficulty concentrating and has to work hard to stay in control and organise his life. Kyle's been taking medication since he was two, and for a while it did seem to calm his behaviour. But he's still aggressive and hyperactive. He's not under control at home, and his parents know he's not ready for school. They know they need more help. Kyle's going to be reassessed. The first step is a medical check, because many other things, like hearing problems or lack of sleep, can make children behave as if they have ADHD. Kyle's cleared on all these things. Searching for clues which might help explain Kyle's behaviour, psychologist Francis Steinberg listens carefully to Dean and Michelle's concerns. Uh, right up until he was 18 months old. So you mean he reached his milestones? Incredibly early. early. Four teeth at 10 weeks, mm. sitting at 12 weeks, crawling at 14 weeks. He went to a stage of getting up at half past three in the morning and or... Um, he'd get up and turn the TV on really loud or <laughs> wander around so the he'd house. Get, he'd get up out Oh, constantly, oh, yeah. constantly. Yeah. What types of behaviours were mostly of concern to you back then? He was like, a bit like the Tasmanian devil. He'd just rush in and cause this big ruckus and, you know, um, bite people, rush at people. Knock people, pe over. Knock people over. Didn't matter whether they were younger, older. Very non-compliant, nothing, you know... It's hard to control. Like, yeah. There was no... You couldn't stop him from doing anything, mm -hmm. you know? Cos it just... You stop him, turn your back, it's gone again. Right. He's had a fire where he put a toy in front of the heater and, you know, gas heater, and then came running down the hallway to show me with it in bed, and it was like... You know, like... Yeah, he's done some fairly... Yeah, locked himself in public toilets and, you know, he couldn't get underneath or over the top mm -hmm. and had to get someone to get him out. I mean, people 
find them in incredibly funny, but when you're living with them day yeah. in and day out, yeah. it's, yeah. Dr Steinberg's heard a lot about Kyle that is typical of children with ADHD. To confirm his diagnosis, she needs to give him a range of psychological tests, so Kyle has not taken Ritalin today. OK, you want her to sit and you sit on her lap? Hmm? How would you like to start? But the results are not as she expects. Let's look at these pictures. Can you show me the apple? And where's the tree? The first one is a puzzle of a cat. What does a cat say? Meow. Yep. Kyle's being assessed for ADHD, but Dr. Steinberg is not seeing the behavior she expects. Where's that cat? You can reach them too, can't you? Okay. Kyle focuses quite well, and he's not distracted at any stage. George likes cows. Yeah? And most importantly, he seems to lack one of the three key traits of ADHD, impulsivity. I saw that. And didn't you, though? In this situation, most ADHD children will grab at things without hesitating, blurt out answers before a question's finished, and run around the room playing with everything in sight. Yeah, but I want you to play what I did. Did you see what I did? Yeah. You sure did. Ready? But during this test, Kyle does not display these problems. Now Francis needs to decide whether ADHD is the root of Kyle's behaviour or whether he's been wrongly diagnosed in the past. Life would be a lot better for Kyle's family if there was a simple explanation for his behaviour and an easy way to manage it. But in reality, it's never this simple. Well, it's pretty complex, actually. Uh, he'd come in with fairly strong diagnoses of having ADHD, but during that assessment, he just was not showing a lot of features of ADHD, certainly attentional problems, but very little impulsivity, fairly good attention, no fidgeting, no lack of inhibition. It, it just wasn't there. A key factor is whether Kyle plans his naughtiness or whether he simply blunders into trouble by doing whatever comes into his mind at the time. When Kyle runs across the road, he's disobeying his mother, but he thinks to stop and look for cars. ADHD children usually just run onto the road without thinking. On the other hand, it may be simply that Kyle's parents have successfully taught him. We'd like to have a an exact, accurate diagnosis for them. I'm not sure what that is at this point. I'd like to give them a definitive answer as to what's driving Kyle's behavior. But I don't think it's that simple an answer. When children do have ADHD, they just don't think before they act. Robert's supposed to be getting his bike ready to take on a family picnic. But he sees a can of spray paint and immediately starts spraying. His friend reminds him he needs to put newspaper underneath, but he still goes at it aggressively and haphazardly. These things happen many times each day, and Mum Jackie has learned tremendous patience. Robert, not on the chain, please. Why? Because that'll seize it up. OK. Now then, I was going to do this, and I was going to take the wheel off and take the tyre off, because it looks a bit weird with golden tyres, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. <laughs> I think you're going to need to put some more newspaper under that, aren't you? Jackie has to choose which battles to fight with Robert. Otherwise, she'd be nagging him all day, every day. Please don't get it on your clothes, Robert. And often, telling him off makes no difference anyway, because he is simply incapable you of thinking about consequences. Okay. you finished? You need to put that back inside. He'll be walking through the playground. He'll decide it's appropriate to do something, and he'll do it, and then... The moment he's done it, he's forgotten that he's done it. He's forgotten why he wanted to do it. He knows that he shouldn't have done it if you go back and you talk to him, and he knows what he should have done in the situation. But at the time, he has no idea, he has no um, consequences ideas. We've tried to teach him them, but um, they, they don't come automatically to him. You have to take him back and discuss things with him over and over again. And so you'll think you've sorted a problem out, and then the next day he'll go back and he'll do the same thing again. But impulsive behaviour is more than just annoying. What's the problem with cycling in a car park? I have no idea. 
it's often dangerous. We've been um, aware right the way through his childhood that we're lucky he's still with us because he's, he's a walking disaster area. With no checks in place, the human being can very, be a very dangerous person. Chrissy's life has been in danger in a different way. At 18, she stopped taking Ritalin because it was assumed she'd outgrown her ADHD. But a lifetime of underachievement and low self-esteem took their toll. She used to get depressed and talk about suicide and things like that. You really start asking yourself, well, what have I done wrong here? Uh, where could we have done something better? What do we do now? to change this, and a little bit with things like that, you're saying, what's the signal? Does she really mean this, or does she need help in some form? If so, what kind of help? How do you, how do you provide it? Many teenagers with ADHD suffer from anxiety and depression because they're always in trouble and have problems fitting in with their friends. At 20, Chrissy developed an eating disorder. I wanted to be popular and I wanted to look good. And the more weight I lost, everyone said, God, you look so good. Oh, you look so good. And I just thrived on it. And this went on um, for years. After recovering from anorexia, Chrissy still couldn't settle. She lost job after job and her life went haywire until her parents realised that ADHD was still the problem and she began to take Ritalin again. One, look at me. We began to think, look, she's displaying the same symptoms that she used to have in her teenage years, so maybe she hasn't moved on from this uh, ADHD. And um, I was really sad about that because I knew how difficult it was for Chris to, um, you know, really operate as her friends operated. Sometimes young people with ADHD suffer so much failure and criticism that it ends in tragedy. Robin Williams sees the story of her son Samuel as a warning to others. There was radio advertising, TV advertising. Family video of Samuel as a 10-year-old reveals a clever, outgoing child. A child who would seem to have a bright future. But throughout Sam's schooling, his reports were frighteningly repetitive. Sam could do better. Sam doesn't concentrate. Sam talks too much. He seemed to do stupid, disruptive, impulsive things. Oh, he it very often got him into yeah, um, difficulties, really, and he got, became very misunderstood because he did a lot of things impulsively. Um, like It's like... The, he didn't weigh up the consequences of what would happen with what he said or what he did until it was too late. And then, of course, he would be quite remorseful because he was a very sensitive person. Samuel was expelled from school at 16 and became severely depressed. Robin tried everything to help. Sam had counselling and psychiatric treatment. After reading about ADHD, Robin took Sam to a doctor who confirmed that this was probably the underlying problem. It was just such a relief to come out of that um, appointment knowing that we had finally found Samuel's problem. And Samuel was also relieved. And at that point, I think he really started to work on his identity. It even helped him with his self-image. It helped him to understand himself. I mean, he got a lot of um, freedom from understanding why all those things had happened at, in his schooling and adolescence. Samuel began to take medication for ADHD and it immediately helped him feel more focused. But it was too little, too late. The first pill he took I'll never forget it because he came rushing up to me and said, oh, Mum, he said, imagine if I'd have had this at age 14 when things started happening to me. Just imagine, Mum, what it would have been like. 
Robin will never know whether earlier treatment for Samuel's ADHD would have improved his ability to cope with problems that at 21 he found overwhelming. He took me by surprise, really. He really let me down. He broke my heart when he took his life because he promised me that he wasn't going to do that. We had an area in his life that we were close to resolving, but we hadn't, and that was a huge thing in his mind. I think you have in front of you a letter Sam was writing to Sally and James, which gives some indication of the struggles that he was going through and the part that attention deficit disorder played in his life. However, even though we know something of Sam's struggles, we will never fully understand why he took his own life. Many parents of teenagers with ADHD say we've failed to recognise the serious risk it poses, not just to their schooling, but also to their lives. It's a huge time for anyone, particularly a mother, because we're not conditioned to losing our children. We're conditioned to losing a lot of things, but not our children, and it's just an unbelievable experience. I wouldn't ever wish upon anyone. He doesn't fit the exact criteria of ADHD. He's got a lot of the characteristics. He's obviously very active. He does show some inhibition problems. And while he can act impulsively in the sense of doing things that he shouldn't, Kyle usually knows what he's doing when he acts dangerously. We're very much concerned that the, his level of aggression and his activity level doesn't seem to be disappearing with the high doses of Ritalin he's on. And that's part of the puzzle. I also think he's very socially aware you know, he, I think he knows how to push people's buttons. <laughs> that sounds about right. If it were just the ADHD, you'd expect to see the child just jumping in and doing something and going, oh, was I not supposed to do that? I mean, he can figure out, oh, I know if I do this, then this person's going to react that way. That's a huge level of planning to be able to have. So it's our feeling that something else must be going on that's contributing to this. And until we can sort out what the something else is, we can't really make a definitive statement in terms of him having ADHD or not. There is no one on the whole team who doesn't think what's going on is extremely serious. This is not a figment of your imagination. This is not uh, something that should be trivialized. And I think the important thing at this point is not even the diagnosis as much as what are we going to do to resolve Kyle. Even if he's doing fine on certain days in kindergarten, going into regular school is a completely different issue in terms of expectations and behavior. And what we'd like is to have a plan in place before Kyle ever steps foot in the door. It's like, that's the big objective for us is, I've got a, a terrible fear of the school, like, I mean, he can, we can make or break him in those first couple of years, you know? And I mean, once the school seems to get an idea that a kid's bad, well, that's it for the rest of his school yeah. life. We've got a few months, and that's fantastic. And the idea that we can get things in place before he hits school so that he's not going to get off on the wrong foot is going to make all the difference in the world. Two weeks later, Kyle stopped taking Ritalin. School draws closer. Can have a nice cuddle? <laughs> nice cuddle. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Michelle and Dean try to cope with his behaviour. They still don't have an answer. I'm going to carry my whole bucket and trap. Okay. See you later, babies. Although Robert may get better at coping, he will always have ADHD. Parenting a child like this is an ongoing challenge. Jackie finds school holidays particularly trying. I shall be very glad when Robert goes back to school again. I've um, 
I'm not sure the house can cope much more with the constant damage that's been inflicted on it. Come on. <laughs> Just leave her. <laughs> Jem. Jem. You take it in turns. You do the next one. <laughs> yeah. Jem. Well, last night he managed to completely reprogram all the television, which luckily is not um, irretrievable. He's broken the front off the television panels. He's just broken it off and snapped it in half. He's, um, oh, he's broken Gemma's Game Boy. He's smashed up the screen. Um, what else has Robert done this week? Stole bubblegum. <laughs> I think that provided he doesn't lose his self-esteem and that he knows that he's clever and that people love him, I think that there is a chance for Robert to perform as a normal human being. Um, I'm not... He's, he's intellectually bright. He should be able to fit in and, and work with other people provided he has guidelines in place and he can learn these strategies to behave. Sam's behaviour is noticeably better since she began treatment. Before, sitting still like this to play a game would have been too hard. I've noticed a big change. Um, she's not bouncing around all the time, which is really, really good. Um, even just alone, that alone is, is sort of taking the stress levels down quite a bit. There's things that need to still be worked on um, that the Ritalin aren't helping with, but um, there's sort of more behaviour modifications that, with the use of the Ritalin in her system, it'll um, help her to learn those new things that she needs to learn um, that she just wouldn't be able to learn otherwise. Sam, can you come and do these dishes, please? Yeah, you've got to do them from this morning, OK? Remember, as part of your punishment. OK? Yeah, and I'd done them. No, it was part of it was to dry them as well. You didn't tell me. I did. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. By the time she's coming home from school, it's either starting to wear off or, in some cases, if she's had it, you know, sort of that little bit too early, it has worn off, but it's definitely sort of around that five, six o'clock mark. It's gone. Leave me! <laughs> But medication does not cure ADHD. Zero. And it does not assure Sam a safe future. Zero. Sam and her family still have difficult times ahead. Zero. Don't kick. Enough. <coughs> Don't pinch. <coughs> 